Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video! Today, we're going to be answering a simple question. What does the Valheim world look like? Imagine if you were able to just zoom out all the way and look at everything, what would it be? Well, luckily, there is a tool that does that. You can actually just put in a seed and look at it. And so, there's actually some patterns that are really interesting that I think are useful for you to know. And I personally don't find that knowing how the game generates stuff ruins anything, okay? But if you don't want to know these things, then don't watch this video, okay? But that being said, I think you'll be fine. Bas basically, the Valheim world is an eye. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like, you may be like, you just drew that eye there. Yeah, I did just draw the eye here, it's true. But there's some reasons for where these lines are placed, okay? And don't get me wrong, this isn't perfect, right? Every Valheim map is different, but there are some things they all have in common, okay? And here's what they are. It looks like an eye. In the center of the eye, you have the spawn spot. But in that area, let's call it the center of the eye, it's quite safe. You're gonna find meadows and not much else. Meadows and black forest, and then sometimes mountains, and occasionally a swamp. Then you get into the inner ring. And this is where you start encountering the plains biome, and you'll also find more swamps and more mountains. And then one level further than that is the outer rim. And this is where you'll start to find mistlands, plains, and black forest. You will not find any meadows in this region. Now, the other two biomes are quite interesting because as you can see, they are different. These islands are all islands that are on different places in every server. Whereas the deep north is always past this line is always deep north and mountains. And then here in the Ashlands, below this line is always mountains and Ashlands. This is why, in general, it's better that you explore more to the east or to the west than to the north or to the south, just because if you go extremely to the north, you encounter unfinished content. And if you go extremely to the south, you also encounter unfinished content. Whereas if you just go east or west, you can get to the edge of the world without ever seeing unfinished content. Now that we know sort of how each world is generated, right? You see, this is a different world, the Seed Hasib. This world is the seed Rito, my personal favorite seed, right? They're totally different, islands in different places. But if you look at it, it is kind of similar, right? I mean, you look here, deep north in the north, deep north in the north, Ashlands in the south, Ashlands in the south, and the Ashlands always starts at the same place. Same with the deep north. There's some constant patterns, right? In addition to that, there's also some patterns with basically the land formation. The last pattern I want to talk to you about is streams, rivers, and let's call them ocean rivers. Three distinctly different things, all right? A river is something you can sail the long ship through, okay? So this is a river. Usually, if you can see them on the map, their river. And it may look here on the map, it may look like, oh, you can't sail through that, but the map just draws it that way. The river is actually there and it is sailable. But don't confuse the rivers with streams, okay? You'll find that in the meadows and in the uh, black forest in particular, there are these little streams. And you can't really see them on the map, but this is one right here. This is a stream. And streams are so small, that you could only fit a carve in certain spots of them. So a stream isn't usable for navigating, but a river is. And the rivers will sometimes cut through entire continents. And this makes for a particularly interesting place because you essentially get the boat transport and speed with a double coast. Whereas normally, if you're on a coast, you just have land on one side. So exploring these rivers is interesting because you get double the amount of terrain. So if you're transporting metal or moving stuff in the boat, it's easier that way because the river has more resources available. 
And you can find all sorts of rivers. Here's another one cutting through. And if you just keep looking at different continents, you'll find that the rivers just occasionally spawn and just cut through the continents. See, just like that. Here's another great river starting in the Mislands and the Plains and going into the Black Forest and then a Mislands over here and exiting near the Plains. That's a really, really cool continent. And in addition to these rivers, there's what I call ocean rivers. And ocean rivers are lines that separate continents. You see, this is like a river. And they're technically just the ocean biome, but what you'll find is that the ocean biome is more like rivers. There's very few times in the Valheim world where you get a genuine big stretch of ocean. Like this is probably one of the biggest ocean-like areas in the game, and it's not even full because this is an actual island, right? But you can see that most of the world is actually land that has these sort of ocean rivers cutting through it. And the ocean rivers are what separate the continents from one another. And that's it. This is most of the patterns that you need to know to kind of understand what a Valheim world actually looks like. And that way you can find all sorts of cool areas. And I really encourage you to look for rivers and explore down rivers. I've had a blast building this base with my buddy up here, and that river has made it easier for us to transport goods here. And it means that whenever it gets windy, we're not totally screwed, because if the wind's going that way, we go that way to leave. But if the wind is going the other way, we just go down the river with the wind at our back. So having the river here makes it a lot easier for us to navigate and bring goods around. And it's a really fun experience. So I encourage you to pay a lot of attention to rivers. Try and sail your boat down them just for the hell of it. You'll find that it's a really good time. And eventually you get the hang of not crashing and it feels a bit like being on a racetrack. Well, at least when the wind's at your back. That's it for this video, everybody. If you want to support my work, then consider purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server and looking at my tutorial about how to do this. It's a very simple process, all you have to do is put in some credit card information and pay for it, to be honest, and then the server is just up. You don't really need to thin it with all the details and worry about that. Most Valheim servers should be purchased for between one and three months, because Typically, playgroups don't last for longer than that, so if you get a Valheim server for a year or something, you're probably just wasting your money. I mean, don't get me wrong, my, the best thing for me is if you go out right now and buy a yearly Valheim server, because I get 40% of that. That's pretty awesome. But I don't want to tell you something that's not actually good for you, because the reality is you probably will only need one month, maybe two, and possibly three. If you're playing with a group of people, they're gonna lose interest and lose momentum before this happens. It's not like playing World of Warcraft where people just play and ruin their lives for years, you know what I mean? Like Valheim's not like that. People tend to play and then they lose interest and they move on to other stuff. And then they'll come and do another Valheim playthrough after they've had enough time away from the game. Anyway, that's it for now. Have a, <laughs> have a great day. And if you want a tutorial about something in particular, then just comment below. I love making tutorials, especially when they're in response to a suggestion from one of you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!